welcome to another E2 tutorial session. Today we'll be working on structured query language. I am your host, Dr. E2. Our goal for this video is to basically teach you how to create databases using SQL. And we'll be doing this using the dBeaver um, software. Before continuing, I would just want to encourage all of us, if you do like this video and find it really informative, especially as you learn about data science, data analytics, or data engineering, please do try to like, subscribe, and then leave any interesting comments or helpful comments you think um, uh, on the comment section of our YouTube channel. We would greatly appreciate it. Without much ado, Let's go ahead and talk about how to create databases using SQL. So the main goal of this session is to teach you how to create a database. And there are different ways that you can create a database. The first and most widely used way is to write the SQL code via creating tables. And then you get to insert values into those um, tables. Basically, you have created columns and tables, and then you insert those values into those columns in your table. That's kind of like one way, and that's really popular. The second way is if the data has been collected for you already in a structured format, right? Basically, the data has columns and rows, right? Which would um, mean that your data has some attributes and entities as well present in it. And all of that data is collected in CSV files, right? With the different type of data collection uh, mechanisms we have out there today, there's a possibility that your data would have already been um, collected in maybe a CSV file or even a text file. How then can you use this to create a database? So one of the problems we look at today is how we can create a database using CSV um, files and would use SQLite as well as dBeaver to help us solve this problem. Now, some of the things you need as you watch this video, obviously you need a computer, at least a, a pretty good desktop or laptop. You also need a dBeaver software installed. I will provide link to the software in the comment or in the description section of this video. So if you don't have the, the software installed, you can just visit that link, I would also provide a step-by-step -step, um, uh, way to get that, to get the dBeaver software installed in the description section. Also, um, I'll provide the data file as well, the CSV data files we'll be working with, um, and you can download that from my GitHub. Um, <clears throat> all thanks to, to SQLServerTutorial.net for um, providing us with that database because that's where we got the database from or should I say the data files um, from and then finally you need a learning attitude right in order for you to to be successful in whatever you're doing you need a positive um, uh, attitude in this case you need a learning attitude be open to learning new things all right now let's look at our problem statement so it says a bike store has provided us with a CSV file and that file contains very vital information like the store's operation, you know, the products, the brands, the categories, type of styles they have, and also their inventory, right? So basically all of those um, information is stored on different CSV files, we, which we can, we can say that these are different tables that would form our database, right? And in those tables, we have attributes and entities, which is the columns and rows, right? Now, currently, this data is stored in desperate formats, making it difficult to manage and analyze, right? So the goal is to try to design and implement a centralized relational database, right, to help streamline their data management and also enable better decision making, right? Um, so this is basically our goal for this project. Now, having given us some sort of background on what we have to do, we can transition into, first of all, looking at the entity relational diagram, 
which shows us the relationship between these different tables because we're going to be creating a relational database, right? And then after looking at the ER diagrams, we can proceed over to um, DB, but I already had the software open, so I wouldn't have to waste so much time trying to open it up. Okay, now here is our entity relational diagram or relationship diagram. I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit. Okay, right, so you can see we have We have nine tables, right? Yes, we have nine tables and you can see all of the different, um, the names of the tables, customers, other items, other staff, stores, brands, products, stocks, categories, right? You can also see the different primary keys as well as foreign key. So what is a primary key? It's a unique identifier for the table. So for the other items, you can see that the other ID is, um, is a primary key right and then um sorry the other item id is a, is a primary key and then for the staffs you could also see that the staff id is a primary key for the stores the store id is a primary key right and then a foreign key is basically a key that is present in another table right so we would say for the staffs the store id or even the manager ID are foreign keys, right? So it's a primary key in stores, but it's a foreign key in staffs. And then we could also see the different cardinalities in terms of the relationships between the, the tables. So please do take note um, of that. So all what the ER diagram shows is basically the relationship between the different entities, right? So. A customer is an entity, a staff is an entity, the other is an entity, the stocks is an entity. So please take note of that and everything inside it. So product name, brand ID, category ID are all attributes. Okay, now let's go over to dBeaver and let's create our database. <clears throat> so first you go to files, you click on new. Database connection, next, SQLite, next. And then you wanna click on create, right? So that's what I'll do. And then I'm just going to name my, my database bike store example. Save and then finish. So we now have that uh, database created, bike store example. But when you click on the drop down and you click on tables, you can see that it's empty. So we do need to, to import or populate um, this section with the different CSV files that we have because each CSV file is a table. So in order to do it, to do that, just right click on the bike store um, example, write your database name, right click on it, and then go to import data. So basically we wanna put data into this database. So import data, and then we're basically looking at a CSV file. You could also import a text file as well. So next. And then you want to go to the folder where you have all those files. So remember, you could download it from the GitHub page. So I'm on the GitHub page now. You go to bike stores. This is this is basically everything here, right? You can just download this to your to your um, to your computer. So I think if you open it up. And then you click here, download raw file. So you basically want to download each of the CSV files. I do have the ER diagram here and the credit basically goes to um, SQL Server tutorial. You can always check them out, all right? <clears throat> all right, but these are all of the files. Please download all the CSV files, all nine of them. 
All right, so let's continue. So what I'll do now is go over to where I have my, my stores and I will just copy all of them, open, next. All right, so we've imputed it here. It's just going to do some table mapping. Nothing, we don't really need to do anything here. Um, but some things you could do is if you wanted to configure, you can come in here and look at this. Um, you could also see the table properties. So basically, if you were to create this table manually, this is the SQL code you would need, right? So you can actually copy this SQL code and go open a new SQL script and do this yourself, right? You could also preview the data, right? This is the data that is present in that. Um, in that CSV file called brands, right? <clears throat> All right. So I think we want to keep this at none. And then next. Hello? And we would just click on proceed. Okay, so basically all of our tables have been created so you can see them all nine of them so you can basically see them here and we can see the data in in each of them so that's basically it Right. And one last thing I would show you is we can then just refresh this. Right. So you can see all of the tables in there. And let's say we just wanted to do a very simple and quick SQL script. Let's say select. I'm going to use a wildcard. And from, let's say, customers, right? Oh, so here we have it. We have all the data and information um, that we can retrieve all everything from customers. So that's how you create um, a database using SQLite on DBRO. I hope this is helpful to you. And if it is, please like, subscribe, and leave any comments on our channel page. Thank you.